Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope your studies are going well and you're not too stressed for exams. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to prepare for the maths exams. I personally studied methods and spec, but I feel like this exam approach will apply a lot to further as well. For those of you who are new here, my name is Darren. I'm a second year med student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. With VC, I graduated in 2020 with an ATAR of 99.95. And with maths, my specialist math score was 44 in year 12 and methods I sat twice in year 11 and year 12 and I obtained a score of 46 both years. Bit of an interesting story. And if you check out some of my other videos, then you'll, you'll see the reasoning and all the, all the stories uh, behind that. Today's video, we'll be talking about how to prepare for these maths exams. And this will be split into two parts. In the first part, I'll be talking about time practice and practice exams. So not just the timings, and the order of how I set the sections, but also what you should be doing to gain the most out of each exam. Okay, what steps should be, you should be taking before sitting the exam and right after sitting the practice exam to really get the most out of it. And in the second part of today's video, I'll just be talking about preparing your bound reference. Enjoy. Before we jump into the first section of today's video, just a brief overview. Here are the math exams you see on your screen now, when they are and what time they are. And there's, so yeah, you have further methods, special exam one and one and two. Today's video is focused on preparing for the exam. If you're looking for a specific exam breakthrough, so top like students who achieved high scores running through exams, I also did that last year. So I had these lives, which I conducted with my friends who scored 50s and premiers awards in these subjects. And in these videos, you can see they're quite long. So this one was with Gordon. These two were methods with each end were quite long because we really talked about the exam in depth and they literally did the exam as well. So they worked out each step. And also a lot of viewers were asking questions and we were answering those questions as well. So feel free to check out those videos. Just watch a bit each time to gain some insight into the thinking behind us answering exam questions and also the what questions that people sitting VC last year had. So maybe a good experience for you guys. And this last video here was just a three-step process for preparing for math sacks that I came up with. And it's probably applicable for exams as well because all maths assessments are pretty similar. Anyway, let's dive into the first section and we'll be talking about timed practice. So in this section, I'll be first going through my timings and what order I set the sections in. And then I'll be talking about how to gain the most out of sitting a single practice exam. So overall, I would say I sat about one set, so exam one, exam two of practice exams a week until it got close to the exam and then I would sit two sets. So it's two sets of methods. So exam one, exam two, exam one, exam two, and then two sets of special sometimes as well. These would be VCAR papers mainly for the company papers. Actually, I'll talk about this a bit later, but for company papers, I didn't sit all of them on time conditions because it's a bit tiring and some of them aren't that accurate. So time practice, if we look at exam one and I'll be speaking more from a methods and special perspective because I'm more familiar with those subjects. Reading time, 15 minutes. Writing time, 60 minutes. Exam two. Reading time, 15 minutes. Writing time, 120 minutes. Okay. The way I sat the exam was in reading time. I would be looking at the extended response because that was what I would start with. So I'd started with extended response first and then short answer. Same with exam two and same for methods and special. Two, short answer. And so in reading time, I would spend all of the time in extended response. Sorry for the mix up here. I think my mind was on Ing Lang. For exam one, ignore where I wrote short answer because the whole of exam one is extended response. It's just one type of question. And for exam two, where I wrote short answer, I meant to say multiple choice questions. So what I should have written was this. The timings and all the things I say next still apply. Just remember that for exam one, I set the exam from front to back because all the questions are of the same type. They're all just kind of extended response. And for exam two, I set the extended response section first and the multiple choice questions second. And this would be me trying to track through the the, the question. The reason I started with extended response and extended response in reading time is because oftentimes I feel that there is tr uh, a progression of questions. So A is really obvious, B gets a little harder, C gets a little harder, D is really hard, but you've got to put together the information from A, B, and C. So I feel like that, that deep thinking I tried to do in reading time so I could kind of have an approach for that extended response question. Whereas for the short answer, each question's a bit disparate. And so, 
I, I prefer just to do that later, just to smash at each question, which is quite different, which are quite different from one another. So that was how I spent my time in the exam. And I aimed for approximately a minute per mark. So I'll write this in green. One min per mark. I would try to stick to it. Usually exam one, it'd be fine. Exam two gets a lot harder to stick to a minute per mark. Um, but this is what my tutor recommended. And I tried to apply it in my practices as well. So that minute per mark strategy. Now, to gain the most out of each exam, you really want to treat it as the actual exam. This is something I repeat for all my subjects. You want to treat the practice exam as the actual actual exam. This is particularly important for math exams because I feel they are very, very time pressured. Um, I feel like for sure English is time pressured, but other subjects like chemistry, I didn't feel too bad, but math, you really got to be really rigorous to make the most out of each mark. And also English is kind of holistic, whereas math is you, you have questions. Each question is worth a certain number of marks. So how can you be sitting it in exam conditions? Well, so before the exam, we'll split this to before sitting the practice exam. You want to, so no notes, have your stationery ready. Have your bound reference if you're using it. So essentially all the materials that you would have in the actual exam, you want to have in this in this practice exam as well. And after, oh, you also want to have a watch as well to keep track of time. You don't want to use um, the clock because you might be sitting really far away from the clock and you don't want to use an alarm because you'll be bringing in a watch. So just, just use a watch. Use a, uh, use a watch to track timings. So after the exam, really, really correct it. Try and correct it soon afterwards. This way you remember your thinking when you were seeing certain questions and pay attention to the answers, especially the VK answers. Actually, I think all the company answers have um, working out as well. And you really want to pay attention to how they got to the answer. Even if you got the question right, they might've done it in a quick way. And if you got it wrong, it's even more important to pay attention to their answer. And then these are the key points here. What you do after the exam is so critical. It's not sit the exam and done. It's do the exam, learn from it. Otherwise, it's just, you're just sort of running in quicksand. You're not moving forwards or progressing. So pay attention to answers and also um, reflect on silly mistakes or reflect on mistakes in general. So silly mistakes, you want to make a, a book of those, of those silly mistakes and ways to avoid them. So for example, you know, unline the question, read the question again after you've finished it. Those are some strategies, but you also want to reflect on your strategies uh, your mistakes in general. So is it because I um, anti-differentiated wrong or I should have used a calculator here. I did it by hand. I got it wrong, but I was allowed a CAS. So next time I'm going to use my CAS to avoid this mistake. Or is it like a fundamental understanding? Like um, I still can't differentiate between binomial distribution and normal distribution that well. So you really want to reflect on your mistakes, whether they're silly, silly, or whether they're sort of uh, an understanding mistake. And, and learn from them. And that's actually how you improve from one exam to the other. So really important steps. When you do a practice exam, you practice your timings, you practice the exam atmosphere and environment, plus you learn from the exam afterwards so that you actually improve for the next one. Great. So next we will talk about the bound reference. Then was there anything else I wanted to talk about for maths? Nope. Okay, bound reference. Bound reference is something that causes people a bit of stress. My biggest advice here is to get it done early. So get it done like a couple days before the maths exam. Because it's something you bring from home, it's a source of comfort. Okay, it's a source of comfort. But that means people sort of go overboard, especially when it gets close to the exam. They start sticking like three different textbooks, exercise books together with three textbooks and a bunch of writing that they did. Don't do that. You want it to be efficient. And most people who have sat the exam will tell you that they didn't use their bound reference that much. So you really want to make sure it's efficient. So I created mine a little late in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so you want to do this early on and you want to have some sort of structure to your bound reference. I'll share my structure. You can have your own structure. So with my structure, I had silly mistakes. So my structure, let's go with blue. I had silly mistakes at the front. So these were things I could sort of look at. So when I was doing my exam, I'd glance over my bound reference and have a look. And are these silly mistakes and think to myself, did I, did I make some of those again in this exam? 
Then I had some of my sort of CAS shortcuts or CAS um, sort of formatting. For example, Euler's in in the CAS, you have a really certain way of setting it out and sometimes people forget and it wastes a bit of time. Also CAS shortcuts as well. Um, and next I would have a lot of like difficult questions. I think I arranged them by subject, but as I said, my bound reference wasn't the best, um, but I had difficult questions from VCAR papers or interesting questions that I sort of had to reach a different understanding to, to obtain to get the correct answer, or maybe I got it wrong. Uh, but I had these difficult questions, VCAR company papers, or from my tutor, and I would arrange those by subject. So my tutor was Derek Ha, by the way, he was a phenomenal tutor who instilled a sense of timing in me, as you might be able to tell from the way I talk about the exams. But yeah, that was the main structure of my band reference. I'll just share with you guys what it looked like. So I had my silly mistakes here. Let's use a highlighter. Let's go with green. Silly mistakes here on the front page, as promised. So these are some of the silly mistakes I made. Be careful you're integrating, so not writing that correctly. Check correct input CAS. That was a big problem for me. I did lose the marks in the exam for that as well. I don't know why, but sometimes I just type the wrong stuff into the CAS. But you can have a look at that and maybe think about whether you make some of those mistakes as well. Next, I had a table of contents. So I'll just write what this is, um, contents page. So I, I labeled my pages so I would be able to find stuff I wanted to find. So as you can see, this is more spesh orientated. And inside you have, you have difficult questions. So here we have Heffernan 2017, a question from there and how to solve it. And here we have the VCAR exam one 2015 and how to solve it. So get onto your bound reference early on. So then you can collate these questions and spend your time and you're not rushing about it. And that way your bound reference can be efficient rather than sort of a last minute haphazard effort to cover all your bases without actually covering anything. And yeah, I think that's all I wanted to cover with today's video. Overall, we had a look at the timings for the exam, how I set the exam, and also a good approach to see your practice exams. And we also had a look at one way to set out a bound reference. It doesn't really matter how you set it out. You just kind of want structure and have the important stuff at the front because that's easier to access. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maths for me was something I don't think I fully grasp even at, at the end of year 12. I felt like I, I could have done better. I had the ability to score really highly, but didn't score as high as I wanted to. But yeah, hopefully you guys do awesome for your exams. Good luck with all your studying. Leave any questions you have in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you all next time.